Hello, everybody, and we're live. Uh, my name is Lea Windischbaum, I'm Community Manager at MALT, and I'm beyond excited today to uh, co-host this webinar today. Um, uh, before I will hand over to our uh, incredible speaker, I will give a quick introduction to give you a little bit of context, and then we are ready to rock and roll. And uh, yeah, who, who am I? Who is MALT? Um, what are we doing here with the MALT Academy? MALT is a freelance marketplace uh, founded in 2013 um, by freelancers to help uh, freelancers thrive. We are originally a French uh, company and um, moved into the German market in uh, October 2019. So uh, that's where I'm based. Actually, I'm uh, in Berlin and the German community manager. And with the MALT Academy, we uh, <laughs> I see a comment in the, in the comment section. Hello from Bayreuth. Hello to there. Um, thanks for your comments. So yes, uh, usually uh, my uh, my plan or my my part of my role is to organize a lot of uh, community events. With uh, COVID, uh, that moved to the online sphere. My great team in France established the Mars Academy over the weekend in March, um, with the first uh, curfew and lockdown where we want to empower freelancers, we want to have a peer-to-peer -peer learning and um, give experts the chance to share their knowledge. And uh, yes, without further ado, I would like to hand over the microphone and uh, thank you all for being here. And thank you um, also to the speaker and to Yes We Hack. Thank you, BitK. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for me. Have yeah. a great webinar. Thank you. So. Hello everyone, my name is BK. I'm the technical ambassador at Yes We Hack. And today I'm gonna show you uh, live hacking. We're gonna hack a mail system. All the bugs are gonna, I'm going to show you are uh, inspired by real bugs I found on the program. But it's a compilation. Like everything will be on the same website. So let's get started because there is a lot of uh, thing I need to show you today. Let's go. So this is the the mail application we are going to act today. It's called Turbo Mail, and we are going to. I'm. I will be trying to show you how, with a small small impact bug, I will be able to get a lot of access on this website. So this talk is aimed for security researcher and bug hunters, but also for developers. So you get an idea of how. Uh, did we manage to act into your service and maybe get some reflection on what you can improve on for your company? So this is the, the website. Let me log in with a guest. We've got a basic uh, inbox and you can send mails. Uh, let's do a short demonstration. Guest, hello world. Uh, is it big enough? Tell me if it's not readable. So I send the mail and I got some mails. So this is the basic application. And we, have, we, we, we will try to get maybe some root access on some servers. To get a better understanding of what I'm, we are dealing with, I've made a small uh, schema uh, of what's going on. So here we got the, uh, the, the Turbo Mail uh, Docker infrastructure and the internet. Uh, First, uh, every connection goes through traffic, which is a reverse proxy, a bit like Nginx. Uh, the requests are forwarded either to the front or to the odd server. There is a gate server and a vault server. Uh, as an attacker, we want to steal information from the vault, uh, which is deep inside the application and even reachable from the internet. So let's get started because there is a lot of to, a lot to do. So let's take a look at this uh, mail uh, application. So because we can send mail between users, sorry, because we can send mail between users, the first thing uh, we usually want to try as a, an attacker is the, an XSS. So let's try to see if we can use HTML because usually HTML is allowed inside mail, not the full HTML, but we got a subset. So let's try XSS. And let's try with some uh, basic HTML and a small script. If you don't know what XSS is, an XSS is basically I'm able to run JavaScript on your website. So I will be able to do a lot of bad things on the behalf of the user that triggered the script. So let's try it like this. 
Okay, this is not rendered. But if we click, uh, we see that the mail is indeed uh, in HTML, but there is no alert. So the script did not trigger. Let's see. Let's see why. If we look at the source code of the of the page, uh, let me zoom in a bit. Here we can see uh, our H1 test is indeed injected in the mail with the script, but there is no alert box. That means the script did not run. Let's check why. If we look uh, at the console, uh, they say, oh, warning, do not copy past stuff into it. But the main issue is uh, there is a content security policy that block uh, the request. So what is a content security policy? Uh, this is a header that your server can send back when you receive a message. It's small over there, but I got a copy somewhere. Yeah, this is the, the CSP returned by the server. If we look at the CSP, it's quite restrictive. We are only allowed to send the form on the same server. And the most restrictive part is this, the default is SSE. That means uh, any script or style or resources need to include uh, this nonce to, to trigger. For example, on, this, on, the, on the page, here uh, the style sheet contains the nonce, and the nonce should be random and not guessable. That means if an attacker is even able to inject HTML, he won't be able to trigger JavaScript. So it's, it makes your website way more safer. Other thing, another thing we can see in this CSP is uh, we are only allowed to connect uh, to self. That means we cannot create link to other website. We cannot use this for phishing. The only uh, very not restrictive thing we can do is this image SSE. That means we can just send an image to uh, to another user. For example, send you an image, image test. Uh, sorry. If I send this mail, the, this should be allowed because images are allowed. So this is the first thing we can do, but as a security point of view, it's not that bad. You can just send an image. What is bad is actually when you load an image, you will be sending your referrer, your, your uh, referrer by um, with the request. If you look at the network request for the image, uh, we see in the request here, there is the, the refer. This is what it looks like. So that means if I send this mail to someone and I put uh, an image uh, that point to my server, I can know exactly when the people are opening the mail, which is OK, I guess. I mean, nobody will pay you money for this kind of bug. It's, it's just how the internet works. But let's keep this in mind and store it over there. It might be useful later. Another thing we can see is in this website, when you access the an email, sorry, when you access an email, you got the ID in the URL. So we can leak the ID of the mail, still not very useful. Another thing we can see is all the email are 120123. And if you play a bit with this, let's try like a big uh, number. We just get projected to the to the main page. If you try with zero, oh, I forgot the mails. The zero is the first one. But one thing we can also notice if if we put negative number, we got on the last mail. So this is a bit weird. But if you are a Python programmer, this shouldn't surprise you that much. In Python, you can index arrays with negative numbers to start from the end. So this is something else we can keep in mind. It's a bug, not really a bit, but nothing very impactful. OK, and so we want to XSS our admin. Why we want to XSS our admin is because uh, 
we, we you will see later that basically the admin here is the admin uh, session got more privilege i can do a lot more stuff and if you want to access the vault we need to go through this admin so let's go back to the guest if i want to access myself i can always uh check the the nonce oh okay uh on this website, the nonce is linked to the session. That means if I refresh the, pa the page, I will keep the same nonce. Usually when you do a server, you don't want to do it like this. But this is something you can see a lot in uh, web apps because a lot of web apps now use uh, AngularJS, Vue.js, and all kind of single page. So for example, if you are on Gmail, and if Gmail give you a, a nonce, it will be the same until you reload Gmail. So there is a bit of persistence in this nonce. So let's look at uh, what the nonce is for this session. I will just copy paste it and try to inject uh, myself with this. Uh, guest XSS. Script. So this time we got the, the valid nonce. And we'll try an alert once again. Yep. So this is the the attack. But it's still not triggering. But we got the nonce. So why isn't it triggering? The response is in the console once again. Uh, with a nonce, you are not allowed to use uh, inline script. You are not allowed to use script, uh, script tag, an attack script uh, and script tag you are uh, required to use uh, a file with, uh, with an SSE. But this is, not, this is not a problem. We can, we can solve this. Let's try again our attack. Because we are forced to use a source file, one simple thing we can do, we are not able to store thing on the server. So, and we are not allowed to use, oh, we can load the re remote resources, but remote resources are bad you can just simply use some data URL. For example, here I will put a data, uh, data URL with base64, and I will just convert this alert to base64. Uh, okay. This is a valid URL. If I open it in a, in a different page, can see it's just alert one in base64 and all the data is contained in the url but this is completely allowed it's almost the same thing i don't know why this is allowed and not the other one but let's try again and this time i got an xss so this is nice i can uh, i can trigger javascript but if i try to send this mail the same mail to the admin uh, we're gonna get a uh, little problem. Uh, the nonce is yeah. To admin, uh, check this important mail. Okay, so I've sent this to the admin. Here I will open the admin tab, check my inbox, and I got the, the attack again. But this is not triggering because the nonce is not the same for the admin. So you got an XSS, you can only run JavaScript code for yourself. It's what we call the self XSS. You, know, you, can, do, you can do anything. And if you report this to a, a program for a bug bounty, they will usually fix it, but you won't get paid a lot. It's not very important. So we need to step up our game and to find a way to, to leak this token. Let's take a look again at the CSP. So for the CSP, what are we allowed to do? Uh, we are allowed to uh, start some forms, but only on ourselves and on the old server. Uh, and if we look at the mail, when we open the mail, what we have here uh, is below uh, our injection point. That's here. Let me zoom in a bit. 
Yeah. Okay. May I uh, throw in a question here? I saw yeah. in the chat. Omar is asking the data can't access the body, correct? No, it's uh, it's the case when you load an iframe, for example, because if you start an iframe, the frame will be on a different domain. But here, it's just the script. The script is technically on a different domain, but it's run on the main domain, so you can access the body. You can access everything, but you are not able to run it because you don't have the admin nouns. But let's see how we can uh, steal these nouns. Here we see uh, the the nouns is available a bit below our attack with a, a JavaScript file. If we can manage to leak uh, this content, oh sorry, I'm not on the right page. This is our injection point uh, on the mail page, but below there is the nouns. And if we're able to leak this one, we should be able to trigger the uh, GXSS for the admin. So how can we do this? This is how we're gonna we're gonna do this. What we can do is uh, exfil to uh, no. Let's send the mail again. If we can create uh, a form, we should be able to submit. Uh, okay, let me explain another way. So we know uh, from before. We have the referral leak from earlier. That means if somehow we manage to put the token, uh, the nonce, in the URL and we load a mail with an image, we should be able to leak the token because the image is allowed to load. And we can just look at the refer header to get the origin URL. So let's try to put this, uh, this token in the URL. But how can you do this with only? HTML and not JavaScript. The trick is pretty simple. You can inject a form, put as an action uh, whatever you want, for example, mail and an ID, the email you want, for example, mail zero. And uh, as a method, I will put get. Uh, below, I will add a text area. I will hide the text area and because i want the admin to to get into my trap i will put the uh, delete button uh, once again so button uh, type submit uh, delete okay so once this will be injected in the page it should create a form. It's not terminated, but it's not a problem because the your web browser. Oh, I'm, I'm not on the right screen. Sorry. So this is what I will uh, I will I will inject. So first a form with an action with to mail zero, method get, a button and a text array hidden. I will put a small message for the admin. Uh, please delete delete me. And I will send it to myself first to test. So I will receive this email. It looks exactly like the other email. But if we check the HTML, we have uh, we have put a form just before uh, the original data. And if we submit the form, it will be done in uh, in GET. Oh, I've made a small mistake. I will fix uh, very quickly. Is I forgot to put a name on the text area. So inbox, let me reset everything to guest title, delete me, hidden, and name. We call this X field, for example. Send again. Yeah. But once you receive this mail, if you click on delete, instead of submitting the original deletion form for the email, it will uh, trigger our fake form. So everything looks normal like the mail was deleted. But if you look, uh, all the data end up in the URL over there. Because the text area at the end, all the HTML after this is put here. And if we put an, uh, if we start an image, if we have an image in this mail, we will be able to exfiltrate uh, this, this nonce. So let's write a small script to do this for us. OK. Uh, let's do a new folder. Uh, 
we call XSS in file explode.py. So uh, to do that, this, because we have a lot of callback from the server and referral to, to leak, we will start a small web server. To do that, I will use Python and Flask. So we do a small Flask server name. Uh, let's uh, first register. Let's do a function to send our malicious attack. Dev send mail uh, to what we want the title and the body. To send this, it will look like this. Let's import. The URL to send the mail, if we check in the network, is just uh, slash write. Yeah. Here, and we will need our session cookie. Let me copy the one from my user. OK, so we got a basic uh, skeleton of what we can do. We can just send mail to someone. And now let's do the whole attack thing. So the first thing we want to do, we will do like a small uh, a slash go route just for us to start the, the attack. What the first thing we want to do? The first thing we want to do is to send a mail to the admin. Uh, we will call this mail stage one. This is the first stage of our attack. And we will load our payload we we'll even call the function render payload that we call stage one. Let's build, I build a, a list of helpers function I can use to go faster. Basically, I will open a payload from this folder called payloads so it's easier to see and render them using Jinja so I can pass parameters. OK, so we can send this. And next, we need a route to receive our callbacks. So the first step we want to do is send a mail to the admin. This mail should create a form. So let's do the stage when that HTML. In this stage one, I will do what I done uh, before on the web browser. But I will first I will uh, create a, a first image. This will be a simple callback, so I know the admin has opened my first mail. Next, I will add the form. When the admin click on the on the form, it will leak the nonce in the URL and redirect the admin to the mail minus one. Minus one means it's the last email the admin received. So what will happen is uh, the first callback will be made when the admin open the mail. When our server will receive this, I will send a, next, a new mail, so I'm sure I'm the last one. And if the admin delete the mail, it will be rejected to this second step with, uh, with the nonce in the URL. So let's go back to the exploit. So in our callback route, we want to to know which stage which sta stage we are on. So request dot get stage. If the stage one is loaded, that means when the admin open the first mail, we want to send a new mail. Now 
that we will call stage two. And we will render the payload for stage two. Here, stage one dot HTML. What we will put in the stage two? The stage two, we only need basically uh, a single image. And with this image, we will check the refer and get the nonce. So let's get the nonce. If stage is equal to two, uh, I'm going to take uh, my example code. So I will get the refer from the query. And I will extract the, the refer using some regex magic. Basically, I will look for nonce uh, between double quotes. Let's add the function, regex extract. Extra import. Okay, so now we got our nonce. Once we get our nonce, we can send a third mail, this time with the XSS, with the valid nonce for the admin. For the XSS, we will uh, read the payload from a JS file because it's easier to read it that way. And we will encode it in base64 and put it uh, like we did before with a data URL. And after that, we send mail uh, to the admin called stage three, render payload. Uh, oh, stage three.html, we give it the nonce and the XSS. So a new file, uh, stage three. So this is what will be sent as the last mail. So just a script with the tie URL, base64, and the XSS we have read from another file. So let's make the XSS.js file. Let's put a simple alert one. And if everything is working as intended, uh, we should have something like this. Uh, OK, I, will, I, I won't spoil the end for you. So we send the first mail to the admin. The admin opened the mail. We got a callback. We send a new mail, so it's the last one received by the admin. Once the admin deleted the first one, it gets rejected to the to the last one with the nonce in the URL. A new callback is made with the nonce. We send a new mail to the admin with uh, GXSS and a valid nonce. And when the admin deletes the mail number two, the stage two, we will reject it, it once again to the XSS. And to do so, we will add a little thing to the stage two. We will once again put the redirection form. Stage two. So once you click on delete, it will it will go to the last mail received. And I will put the hidden text area to have something stealthy. Okay, so this should work. And because I'm not 100% sum of my code, I will copy past uh, what I did for my test, which is basically the same. So let's see all of this in action. Uh, did I forget to save? Yeah, I forgot to save. So we start this exploit server. I will open a new tab now to, to start the attack. Uh, oh, one thing uh, I need to do first is I need to put the, uh, a valid session. So I'm logged as a as guest, and I give my guest session ID over there. Now I can go back to the website. I will go to malicious dot localhost slash. Uh, this is the the Flask app we just created, and I'll go on the slash go to start the attack. Uh, is it stage, stage go? Oh, just the port is 5,000. It said mail sent. So let's look at what it, at the admin. Uh, it's missing something, I think. Okay, let me try again the demo effect. 
Uh, let's go. Why the payload stage one dot HTML? Mm. Something went wrong. Uh, did I forget to save the file? Yes, I forgot to save the files. So the files are empty. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. <laughs> so let's read it again. Send the mail. So and we check the inbox. We got the stage one. Here we can see the attack, but in a real scenario, I will have put some uh, something in before just to hide this part. I got this mail. If I delete the mail, I get redirected. You see in on top, I minus one with all the data here. If I look at my uh, server, I see I got the callback for the stage one and the stage two because I, I got redirected. If I delete once more, I got on stage three and the XSS trigger. Yeah. Let's do it uh, once more because I forgot to switch screen. Inbox, reset, reset. let's go. The admin receive a mail, delete, delete, and the XSS trigger. So that's nice. We got our XSS. But we got another problem. Uh, if we look at the console, and if usually when you once you get an XSS, what you want to do is to read uh, the admin session so you can log in as an admin. But uh, like, like a lot of websites, if you look at document.cookie, in JS, it's empty. Because the cookie is HTTP only, it's secure. Uh, not secure, but HTTP only. That means we can't read it and we can't exfiltrate it. So let's look at what we can do as an admin first to, to go further. So the admin got this extra menu where I can change uh, the template of the mail. If you do a lot of bug bounty uh, or CTF, this should be a big uh, safety warning for you. Uh, big, you should see what's what will be happening here. Here we can inject some templating uh, script. So, for example, uh, oh yes, and I can preview it. So this this is what it looks like when we receive a, a mail. But what we can do, we can use uh, some code inside. We can change it, and this will be rendered by uh, by Jinja. So we can do some template injection. That template injection uh, remotely through JavaScript, uh, it's painful. We don't want to do that. Uh, we will have huge uh, GS file, huge CSS is too much trouble. So what I will try to do is simply log, log the request. That uh, I can do that headers and that cookie. If I do this and I preview, my cookie is rendered on the page. So what I will try to do now is make an XSS attack that will trigger this page on the admin account and send back the session uh, to my uh, to my malicious server. So let's update our XSS uh, payload. So alert one is nice, but you don't you don't get things done with uh, alert one. We will do uh, a function to preview this template. So preview template, pass it as an argument. The URL is basically slash admin update TPL. We need uh, some body. So form data. And we will add our element to the body. So the, the template. And uh, no, the body action preview because we don't want to change the, the template for everyone. Then we will we need to do uh, the method change it to post, pass the body, and finally call fetch with our URL and our option. This is our re response element. I can await it because I put it in async. And I will just return the text, uh, response.text. Then I will do a function, a main function. What is this? Um, so we'll get the response from uh, preview 
template. So what do we want to render? What we did before? I will just add uh, an extra bit of uh, before, after. I just put session. It's just because I don't want to do passing. I will just split it uh, on this. So the session should be uh, our response. Uh, we will split. Uh, yes, we need to await it. We will split on session, and we will get the first element of the session. So it should be this. And because we want to exfiltrate it to our server, uh, remember the CSP. We can do we can we cannot do a callback to our server except with an image. So no problem. Let's just create an image. So document that creates element image image.ssc, I put my malicious website uh, callback. And I will put this time state three and put the session in the session, in the session element. And after that, um, document.body.append child image. And we call the main function. So when our XSS trigger, we will ask the admin to render this malicious template that will leak the session, and we'll be able to recover the session this way. So we won't have to do the next steps of the attack through an XSS. Uh, everything is saved. Uh, let's try once again. And here, in a stage three, we're just looking for the session. And if you got the session, I will print it. So let's start our uh, malicious server once again. It started. I will go in the inbox and reset my admin mailbox, and I will send the mail. So we see the go. I got the from the, the first callback. So the mail has been sent. Here the admin. Oh, sorry. Here the admin. I received the first stage, stage two, stage three. And uh, I've, I made a small mistake. If you look at the second screen, I received session like this. Because if I want to use uh, this kind of notation, I need to use backtick. OK. Let's go back. Uh, inbox, reset. We send the mail. So this is the admin. He received the first stage. A leak the nonce. A trigger the XSS and exfiltrate the session. I hope so. Let's go back to our logs. And if you look at our logs, we got here, got session. So I managed to exfiltrate the session. Basically, and now as an attacker, I become admin. But if we look at our, so this was the, the full attack. But if you look at the at what we are aiming to do during this talk is, we are just admin on the front server, but there is still a lot of, a lot to do. So let's continue. Now that we are admin, I can just put the session in my account to do this. We are on the administration, so we can do some template injection. But what we want to do is to get uh, what's it stored in the vault. But if you want to access the vault, uh, the session, oh, sorry. If you want to access the vault, the session is not enough. Here, you need to submit a password. For example, if I want the SSH that is in the vault, you tell me I'm unauthorized. OK, let's let's try to find a solution for this. So we'll use the template injection once again. Because now we can just write the payload over there. It's way simpler than to use the, uh, the XSS. So we are in Jinja. The whole website is made with Jinja and Flask. And we want to get maybe some code execution on the server. When you do, if you do some uh, Jinja application, you can use some function, but not everything is available in the scope. For example, if I just want to call uh, the GF function and I call preview, I got an exception, this is not defined. It's not available in the global scope. But something you often find in the uh, global scope in Flask is the function URL for. This function, uh, you give it a, a function name, for example, index, and it gives you the URL for this. This is completely useless for what we want to do. What is useful is this function got uh, globals parameters that itself contain uh, built-ins. 
And this object contain actually all the Python built-ins. So we can recover the, the, all the function we want. For example, if I do dir and I do preview, I can see what's available in the context. And if I do evil, I can just evil some Python code. So let's try to get a shell on the server to leak this password. I will create a new script to do this for me. exploit.py. So to do this, uh, we will need, uh, I will copy paste because I'm already a bit late. I'll explain the code. So to send uh, the payload, I will open once again uh, a new folder called payloads to load them. To send the payload, we will wrap it uh, in the function. So all the code we're going to write will be written basically over there. Uh, why I do this is because once you start to run code through eval or exec, you will get a uh, scope issue. Wrapping everything in a function uh, save, you, save, save you a lot of trouble. And to exec this code to get uh, no problem for encoding decoding, I will recover the built-ins and store them in a B object and call B exec and load the code from the hexadecimal version of the code. I will just put it in the X. And I will send the payload. So I, I will call update template once again with the data and the cookies. So here I need to put the cookies we leaked uh, just before. OK, so we can basically run Python code. So let's create of uh, payload we want to, to run. So the remote shell, uh, simple remote shell. This is a simple remote shell. Uh, this is mouse name and the port. So basically when this code will be running, I will get uh, a callback on my server and I will be able to run uh, BNSH. So let's look at this. I can stop the XSS. Uh, STTY, so I forgot to save once more. Uh, I will start the a listener for the for the shell. Basically, it's uh, netcat listening plus uh, STTY row. With this command before, you will be able to use uh, auto completion and stuff like this. Okay, and I run the exploit. And if I look over there, I should have a callback. I didn't add my callback. So what happened? Uh, is my uh, session valid? Uh, sorry. The What did I switch? I forgot to save this one. No, it's OK. Oh no, I just have to wait a bit. So the this the Python code got triggered and I'm on the server. So that, that's nice. Let's try to, to get this uh, this admin password. So let's cut the application.py. And if we look at the code for the vault, here uh, we see that actually uh, the password is is not checked over there. The password is just forwarded. Uh, let me uh, open this with uh, some nice coloration. Uh, let's do fi app.py. If we look at the at the admin uh, function, we don't have uh, the the password is not here. So what what we can do if we are an attacker, we can say oh. Not a problem. Let me just uh, modify this uh, web page. and just do a, I don't know, open slash gmp slash password and and write it once I receive it. So the next time the admin come back, I will uh, I will store the password and I will be able to to steal it. Uh, write password. So we can do something like this. But if you look at our shell, uh, 
everything is only uh, writable by root and we are not root. So we are a bit stuck. And uh, if you talk to the admin, he told me, oh, but I don't care about the server. There is nothing on the server. If you cannot access the vault, it's basically worthless. So we got another problem. How can we steal this password? Uh, let's try another Python script. So because uh, the application is in Python, basically everything run in the single process. We, that is the Python process. And so what we can do is just look inside the memory of the, Pryta, the Python process to find uh, a reference maybe to the function. And maybe we can do this, replace the function directly in memory. Let me show you. Uh, OK. Uh, so payloads, new file. So we'll call hook.py. So because we are in an exec uh, context now, with all the wrapper I've made and everything, I can just import some stuff. And with Flask, there is something very useful. You can just do import current app, and you will get reference to the current application. And what I will do is with this current app, I will register a new function before request. I'll call it hook. So this function will be called uh, before every request. And in this function, I will simply do this. I will uh, um, check if the path is admin vault and the method is post. If it's this, I will just make a, a request to my, uh, my malicious server with the password. But you are not supposed to do this. If you try to do this, um, Flask will tell you you are not allowed to register hooks once the application is started, because that's not supposed to happen. But this is not a problem. In Python, there is no private. Not, so we can just look at the source code of Flask and see what is blocking us. And what is blocking us is in the current app, there is a flag called uh, got first request. And if we just put this to false, we'll be able to register the function uh, like if it was in the starting part of Flask. So, OK, let's uh, submit this. So we'll use our exploit from before. Instead of sending the reverse shell, we will send the hook. I can leave this shell. Uh, I don't need it anymore. Uh, but I will need to listen on uh, on the port uh, 4242 output, I think. Yeah, 4242. OK, Python exploit. So nothing happened right now, but the code should be executed. If I go back to the admin and I try to get, uh, for example, the SSH with the vault password, and I get, uh, what happened? Oh, I, I everything is hanging. If you look at the top left of my screen, it's hanging because it sent a request to my server, but my server didn't answer. And if you look on my log, I just received this HTTP request with slash vault. The vault password is vault. So it's easy, easier for me to type, but it's not a secure password. So with this simple hook, I'm able to leak whatever information I want. And so now we got the admin password. That's nice. And we can leak data from the vault. Let's go back and check. If I put the vault password, I get it. So I can leak the SSH key or whatever is in this vault. But this can also be used to, for example, uh, send XSS to every user that go on the website. You can basically hook any uh, page on the website. But this is not over yet. Uh, getting uh, access to this vault is nice, but I want to get uh, code execution uh, on this vault. I don't know if I have time to explain everything, but Let's continue. So we are basic. We started from XSS, and now we are basically admin with the session and with the password. So, and this hook was on the on the vault password, but you can do the same hook on the login page and get basically all the password from every users. But we can still do more. So 
if we look at how the gate and uh, the vault works, we'll, we'll, uh, let me show you. Uh, so we leaked the code bef uh, earlier. Uh, where is, okay, let's open it over there. So we say when we are communicating to the vault, basically we are sending our request to the gate that forward the request to the vault here. We are not allowed to talk directly to this vault. And to send this request, uh, the gate use uh, Axios. It's a very common, uh, oh, let's remove some logs. It's a very common uh, GS um, fetcher, uh, HTTP client. And this vault basically just check for the password and forward the, the query to the next server. And it does it this way. So it just use Axios with the, our URL, if that come from the query, and forward the response back. But we also see on this code that the gate server, when you click on wipe, it will do a dos, uh, Docker uh, restart vault. So basically, this container is allowed to talk with Docker. And if you're able to talk with Docker, you are basically root. We'll see why in a bit. So how can we transform a simple GET request with Axios into a full uh, Docker root exploit? Well, the, the thing we can do is uh, the way uh, Express and Body Parser pass the, the query is uh, here, you are not 100% sure that the URL will be a string. If someone submits uh, something like this, URL, uh, for example, test, uh, bi.tk, what you will receive uh, here in URL will be this. It, it will be an object with the key test equal to bi.tk. And this is a, this is a problem because uh, Axios support two kind of call. You can either call it here with a string or with an object. And if you call it with an object, you can put some parameters. For example, I can put like, if I can manage to put a method, I can do method post and transform my get query in a post query. I just need to put like the URL as the domain I want to access. And I can transform this query. Uh, I can add some data and I can do everything like this. The only need I think to do is if I want to do the same thing, like uh, test 42, this will look like this and URL uh, data of test equal 42, except it will be a string and uh, URL of URL bi.tk. So we can control Axios. And Axios also supports a very nice feature is, uh, let me check my notes. It's a uh, socket path. So for Axios, you can submit a Unix socket and it will use that as a proxy. But what we can do is actually submit uh, the Docker socket to Axios. This way we will be able to send HTTP query to Docker directly. So let's build the script to do all of this. Uh, so I will build a new Python script. I will call it docker.py. What I want to do is I want to communicate with the, with the vault. So I will need the request module. Uh, keep in mind this, all the code I'm writing here will be executed inside a template, uh, inside Jinja, inside everything. So we want a function run in container with a command and an ID. Uh, the command we want to run is a basic uh, reverse shell. It's basically what we did before. It will start a shell on the machine and call back my server. I will use the password I've leaked earlier. And to do uh, an execution in Docker, you need to do two, cr uh, two query. The first one is to create an execution process. To do so, you need to submit uh, as a data, the command you want to execute, and in the URL, the name of the, cont the container you want to run the command uh, inside. 
I'll add the password uh, for the gate because if I didn't add the password, I'm not allowed to use the gate. And I use the trick I showed you earlier with the object construction instead of a string. So, so Axios will receive this whole object instead of just an URL. And after that, we need to call the start exec with the ID uh, we got from the response. And the start exec uh, will basically uh, start the, the command we, we choose. Uh, instead of submitting directly this, I put everything in a bash minus C. It's just dash C is just simpler, simpler. OK, so we got all of that. And we want to run all this code inside the container. Uh, run the code inside the vault container. So let's try once again all of this. I will uh, start again my uh, remote shell listener and start the exploit and hope oh, it works. Uh, last thing I need to do is change in the exploit. I want to call docker.py this time. Okay, let's run this. We wait a bit, and if we're lucky, I got a callback. And this time I'm root, and I'm not on the same server anymore. I'm in the vault server. So I can just go here, look at the MGS code. I got the, uh, yeah, I got the SSH key once again. So this is how, uh, from a template injection, we use a server-side request forgery to communicate with an Axios uh, HTTP client to forward everything to Docker. And now we are root inside the Docker. And just before I finish, uh, being root inside the Docker is nice, but uh, being root outside of Docker is even better. So let's finish with this. Let's create the last one. Uh, we'll call it host.py. Oh, yes, just before. Here, I'll, I've run this in the vault. But if I want to access the host server, for example, I can just uh, change it here to out, start my listener, run my exploit, wait a bit for the Docker client to run everything. And uh, I'm on the out server as root once again. And here I got the private key that's used for the authentication. But we don't want to, to run the code here. What we want is to access the host. And to, the, to do that on the host, we will do basically the same thing. We will communicate with the Docker API. But instead of starting uh, an execution process, we will start by uh, a first, we will create an image from, oh, I call it Pulalpin, but it's actually Pul Ubuntu. I will create an image from Ubuntu Latest. Then I will create a new container. So, and this container, I will bind uh, slash from the host in slash host inside the container. I will run all the command uh, from earlier, so the password and the remote shell. And last, I need to start the container with the container name that we created before. So let me just put everything. So I generate a random name. I pull, uh, creating this image, I'm ensuring that uh, Ubuntu is available on, uh, let's rename this because Ubuntu. I'm uh, ensuring Ubuntu is available on the remote server. Then I create a container with the name exploit something uh, and the command uh, remote shell here. And then I start the container. So let's try this once more. I start my reverse shell uh, listener, and I run this. Uh, I forgot to change here. And let's go. Python exploit. I wait probably longer because there is more operation. And I got a shell once again. So I'm still inside a Docker. But if I go to slash host and I look, I'm inside actually my own computer. So if I get slash host slash host name, uh, uh, get slash host etc host name, you can see route access, which is the same as on my server. So, 
So I'm not exactly as root on the server, but from here I can edit uh, etc password. I can edit whatever I want. I'm root and I get access to the full file system. So this is all I wanted to show you. I know it's a bit, uh, it's a lot in a short amount of time. Uh, it, I think the video will be available if you want to, to watch it again. I will also uh, give the dockers if you want to try it by yourself. So in conclusion, uh, once you get this, you, you can, with a lot of imagination, you can always escalate your bugs. Uh, you, even if someone reports you like, oh, there is a small uh, self-XSS, uh, small leak somewhere, like, if you look at what we had at the beginning, it was just uh, HTML injection without JavaScript, a uh, rougher leak, and that, that's it. So just chaining everything like that, I uh, can give you a lot more. So <laughs> that's it, basically. I hope it wasn't too fast. But <laughs> I hey. follow. I follow. Hey, I follow the the um, attendees, and um, we'll say thank you so much for for this <laughs> great content. Also, thank you everyone for for joining this uh, Malt Academy. If you are interested in uh, more academies, uh, feel free to check out our website malt um, slash academy dot com. And if you want to do the same as BitK, feel free to also apply uh, as a speaker. We're always looking for great content and uh, great speakers. And I hope to welcome you soon again, BitK. It was a pleasure to um, co-host this too. webinar. And mm -hmm. yes, um, thank you, everybody. Have a great, uh, great evening and hope to see you again soon. Uh, will the chat stay open a bit if I can answer the, some questions? Will, it will be open, yes, definitely. Yeah, so I, I will just... I will uh, stay there if if you have some question. I don't know if I can keep the video or not. Uh, yes, of course, of course, feel yeah, free. So if we you can get continue. Some question, uh, I can answer the question or go back to some steps if you want. Uh, oh, there is a question tab. Uh, function. Okay. So I don't think there is question. I will try to give you the Docker Compose file with. Uh, all the infrastructure. And actually, there is some shortcuts you can take to make all of this uh, faster. So if you want to try by yourself, you can skip uh, some parts of this attack. But it will be an exer uh, exercise left for the reader, as we say. Yeah, so if it was a bit too fast, I was like, uh, I was checking time and I was a bit short. I can go back uh, a, a bit, uh, a bit right now. So what I did is uh, all the script I've written here to work with uh, Docker is uh, basically th this Python code will be running uh, inside the template. So we can just run Python code. That's something we have. And what we want to do is to uh, communicate with Docker. And Docker, uh, even if you don't know it, uh, there is an, uh, an API for HTTP. Uh, HTTP API, let me show you. Uh, so if you go on the website for Docker, you, you can communicate with Docker with HTTP. But usually, uh, the Docker is not exposed uh, through uh, an IP and a port. It's only exposed through the Docker WebSocket for security reason. But you can find some server with the Docker available on, on a port. So what we do is because we use uh, the so Docker socket as a proxy, the HTTP request is first sent to the proxy. So Docker thinks the request is for himself, itself. So it will uh, trigger all we can do with Docker usually. And to get uh, the access to the host, basically it was I was adding a binding. It's a volume, and so I'm binding the slash from the host inside the container as slash host. But here you can put every feature from Docker. You can add, uh, for example, uh, we can start privileged Docker, so you can probably escape it. You can connect it to other networks, like for example here my uh, my rogue uh, my connection my this Docker is if I. 
oh, if I look uh, what is running, I got exploit something, but it's connected to no networks. But I, I could easily connect it to one or other networks. I can I can do basically whatever I want with Docker. And this is possible because the gate server use uh, Axios this way. And it was expecting URL to be a string, but it can be an object. Uh, average video. Yeah, basically the, the starting point is I was allowed to to send some HTML. And, and this happened a lot, actually, because for example, you are allowed to send HTML in the mail. And there's a lot of websites when you can send some HTML and they just strip all the JavaScript uh, handler, like uh, on load or on error. But submitting a form can be as much as uh, an exploit. Uh, for, uh, should it be, but I think this exploit is doable uh, without any, any knowledge on the code base. Uh, let me explain why. The first part is uh, when you send the XSS to the admin, <coughs> if you are doing this in real life, you can just uh, leak the HTML uh, of the admin main page and start with this. For example, I, I could have, instead of exfiltrating this session, I could have just done a document that, uh, uh, document element that outer HTML and basically I got the whole HTML and I, I could send it back to me so I can see that there is a, an extra admin menu and go, go through multiple iteration to get the information and get the admin. Uh, the template injection, you can find it by yourself quite easily. The URL for method is almost always available in a Flask. There is tricks to recover it if there is no URL for available but it was too long for the talk. And for the last part, uh, for the Axios, what you could do is you can uh, try to do a small uh, attack. For example, here, instead of creating the whole Docker thing, if I, want, if I was in the black box scenario, what I would have done, I will, uh, let me, for example, uh, check attack. I will have put my URL to my server, so that be .tk, and I will just put like method post. And if on my server I got a callback, if it's no callback, that means it's not working because I've submitted something that I, di I didn't submit URL as a query. But if I got a post callback, that means that my uh, object injection was working. So step by step, yes, it will be way more difficult, but I think it's everything is doable from the outside. Uh, we does not sanitize almost everybody. There is bugs in every code base. So yes, you should sanitize, but it, you can still have a thing go through. Like for, for example, uh, I use something very similar on a real program, not with the form forward with the click, but with the refer link because I was allowed to put an image. And there is a lot of service when you can put an image, like in forums, in uh, all the markdown stuff. You can you are allowed to put the image from remote server, so you can leak the the token. But I think some uh, browser start to think to just stop sending the referer at all, because there is no much gain to this. It's mostly used for advertisement anyway, to tracking and everything. So, using fetch as a response uh, will differ for scores. Uh, no, because I don't use uh, I use scores, but um, if you look at the this XSS, is actually uh, run uh, here directly on the stage three. Uh, the XSS is run uh, on the stage three, so this success is run on the main server, so you don't have calls issue. Because you are still on the same server. Even if you look at the 
at the XSS, you see I, I put like a local URL. It's, it's on the same. And I used image SSC to do the exfiltration. I could have used fetch, but I think the CSPs block everything else. Any, any more question? I think it's OK. So thank you, everyone. I hope uh, you learn new stuff today. And if you want to play with this uh, Chobo Mail playground, I can. I need to find a way to upload it somewhere, but I can give it to you. But don't put it on the internet, because as you see, it's very vulnerable. Okay, so bye everyone. I will escape. So thank you again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Pete K, for your great uh, thank you for the invitation. Answering all the questions. I hope maybe to see next you. time I'll do something a little less technical, maybe. Or it would be great. Less information and more time. I also <laughs> saw the question uh, to the wish of doing more on IT security. So um, that's nice. That we can definitely take into account, and I will propose it to my team. Also, okay. feel free to apply as a speaker if that's your specialty. Please do so. We're always <laughs> looking for great speakers. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Have a great evening, and all the best to you. Bye, everyone. Bye.